1858, a man named Charles Blondin, who was a French entertainer known as Blondini the Great, or the Great Blondini. In 1858, he walked across a two-inch tightrope, 1,100 feet, from one end of Niagara Falls in New York to the other end in Canada. He crossed Niagara Falls on a two-inch rope. And he crossed the falls and the crowds went crazy. The reporters were mobbing him and it was a madhouse. But he wasn't done. He turned around and he got a wheelbarrow and he walked with the wheelbarrow all the way back across to the other side, two inch rope, 1100 feet across Niagara Falls. The crowd couldn't believe it, but he wasn't done. He then took cement and filled up his wheelbarrow and walked back again across the two inch rope, 1100 feet over Niagara Falls. And when he got off to the other end, the crowd was going nuts. They could not believe what they had just seen. He had just crossed this tightrope three times and the last time a wheelbarrow full of cement. So he yells at the crowd. Now who believes I can carry this cement filled wheelbarrow across the rope? And they all said, we do, we saw you do it. We believe, we know you can do it. And then he said, then who will ride in the wheelbarrow? And nobody said a word. Nobody made eye contact with the great Blondini. Everybody fell silent. Nobody was willing to put their money where their mouth was. Nobody was willing to get in that wheelbarrow and let the great Blondini walk across that tightrope with him. After a few moments of awkward silence, his manager, Harry Colcourt, said, I'll go with you. I will ride in the wheelbarrow. I've seen you do it. In fact, I've seen you do this uh, all sorts of times. I've seen you do all sorts of crazy things before. I know you can do it. I'll go with you. So his manager, Harry Colcourt, gets in the wheelbarrow. And as they're leaving, listen to what the great Blandini says to his manager as they're about to cross the tightrope, two inches thick, 1,100 feet long, across Niagara Falls. The great Blandini says, look up, Harry. You are no longer Colcourt. You are Blondin. Until I clear this, pla this place, you are a part of me, mind, body, and soul. If I sway, you sway with me. Do not attempt to do any balancing by yourself. If you do, we will both go to our death. Paul once said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And Blandini's words are a great example to us of how important it is as a Jesus follower to remember that we are no longer ourselves. We are with Christ, body, mind, and soul. And where he goes, we should go. And when he sways, we should sway. Who he loves, we should love. When he says do something, we should do something because to attempt to balance on our own will certainly lead us to our death. Jesus lives in you if you're a Jesus follower today and you should go where he goes and love who he loves and do what he does. That is the way of a Jesus follower. That is what we are called to do and to be, to with one body, one mind, one soul, walk with Jesus. You know what's crazy is He's got you in his arms. He can take you anywhere you need to go. He will protect you and he will care for you. And he will never let you fall. He will never let you down. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That should be our motto today. And that should be the thing we bank on every day, especially in these uncertain times when we don't know what's coming next, when we don't know who, the, who our next leader might be and, what the economy might do, we just have to remember, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He's got me, he's got you. Don't sway, don't attempt to do it on your own. Let him take care of you.